playing as opposed to practicing? Oh, absolutely. I didn't practice anything until I was about 14. Okay. Okay. Until then, I didn't. All I wanted to do was play the show, and then I went, you know, doing other kids things stuff. that the kids did, you yeah. know. And um, but uh, a, a light came on for me. There was a song, a Chet Atkins song, and I tried to work it out, and I just struggled with it and struggled with it, but. I felt like I was on to it, and I, I kept at it and kept at it, and then I could get my way through it. And it was such a revelation that I thought, if I did this all the time, I'd be able to play a lot of these things I'm listening right. to, you know? And that was when the, when the light bulb of, if you get to work. At about 14 years old? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, so then from, from like 16 to 30, I, it, the, the question should have been, did you ever sleep and did, did you, you ever, ever stop? eat? Right. Yeah, because I just played non-stop. You know? And influences Chet Atkins, like you mentioned. Well, yeah. Well, my earliest influences were country, were Jimmy Rogers, Hank Williams, oh, Hank Snow, really? all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then uh, Chet Atkins, Merle Travis, mm -hmm. and then Jerry Reed, um, and James Burton, Albert Lee, yeah. uh, Roy Nichols, yeah. all yeah. the country guys were my big influences. But as a player, I mean, uh, if you examine the way I play now, it's a mishmash of of Django, um, uh, uh, Wes Montgomery, Chet um, uh, uh, Atkins, Chet Atkins, James Burton, you know, uh, everything George Harrison, jazz, the country, country jazz, folk everything. rock. It's just yeah, yeah. that's what I, makes you you. <laughs> I fell in love with it, it's, it's songs. I'm a songs player, and uh, you know. It's hard, sometimes it's hard for guitar players to actually describe themselves, you know, like there's no question B.B. King is a blues player. Sure. There's no question Joe Bonamassa it's a is, blues, is a blues player. West was a jazz player. Yeah, right, right. right. And Joe Satriani plays Joe's music. <laughs> you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a rock player, right? But my style has so many roots, but to me, everything I play sounds country, you know? Really? E even when I play jazz, it sounds a little country. It's got a little country <laughs> thing to it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I mean, mm. you know, it, what you've been able to do, and maybe you could help some of the guitarists out there, which, you mm. know, there, there's, in my opinion, there's a fine line between a fantastic guitarist, who mm. could be a studio guy, right. and somebody who has their own voice. Exactly. You hear B.B. King, one note, you know it's B.B. King. Yeah, you hear exactly. Carlos Santana, you know, you, know, you hear exactly. you, you know it's you. Well, thanks. And, some other guys are fan ridiculously mm. talented guitarists, mm. studio guys, but, but no one wants to see them play. Well, you don't even know it's them yeah, when you hear it because you just sound like a guitarist. And you know there's a place for that. Of you know, course. There's nothing wrong with being the guy in the background Absolutely. who doesn't need, you know. Sure. It's not that, uh, you know, I don't need limelight, I don't need glory. What I need to satisfy me is to do a good job. And then that's, that's yeah. the bottom line. And to be happy with playing. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, I think I was in my mid-thirties by the time I finally said to myself, well, this is my sound, this is, this is the way I play, this is the way I write, and you know what, I can't be like those other guys that I, who I love and admire. I, that doesn't come natural to me, I can do it, but right. it doesn't come natural. This is what naturally comes to me, so I'm going to pursue this. That was the, mo the moment of, if I may say, finding your own voice or accepting it? Both. Okay. Because hey, yeah. that's a really, you know, as a yeah. musician, everybody's well, trying for that. Exactly. I mean, look, the truth is, Michael, there are a million players out there better than me. But uh, I write yes. my own songs and I have my own voice. Thank heavens for that, you know, because, yeah. and I'm, I'm just so grateful. I wake up every day so grateful that people still want to come and see me. Okay. And I'm always trying to better myself every day, you yes. know. It's, a, it's definitely a work in progress. Um, and, and I've tried to beg, steal, and borrow as much as I, I can from everybody, yes. you know. But it's the songs that I, that I love. Yeah. That uh, I think I learned a long time ago that, okay, I've got to be dedicated to the guitar, I've got to put the work in. Right. But I've got to have something good to say, and that, and, and that is some songs. A song, right, you right. know. So, uh, all I listened to when I was younger was singer songwriting. I listen to Gordon Lightfoot, Don McLean, Neil Diamond, yeah. Carol King, James Taylor, 
Uh, and then, of course, I grew up with Merle Haggard, right. uh, Buck Owens, um, um, uh, Dolly Parton, oh. yeah, everybody, uh, right through to Alison Krauss, you know. And um, I listened to everybody, and, and I listened to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. I took in everything. I even went through a period where I thought for a moment I was going to be a jazz guitar player until you know, I went to see George Benson. And that's always a problem for everyone. And, and George Benson. Yeah, that was like, yeah, that was like George. For many people. You know. Hey, I was doing a, I was doing a gig with Frank Vignola and, oh, no. and Vinny Raniolo. They were my, my guests. And we were jamming away on this tune. And Frank turns to me and says, is anyone as good as us right now? And I said, George Benson's better than all three of us right now. And he said, you're right. And we just kept going. I saw a video of you guys playing Mm -hmm. How High the Moon? How High the Moon, yeah. I think, I think I saw it. Yeah. It was great. We just filmed some stuff in the dressing room in, in New Zealand. When I, I brought Frank and Vinny on tour with, oh, with, with me. Yeah. And, uh, Frank's been out. Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah. you know, uh, playing that stuff at three-part harmony, it's like a tribute to Les, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do you, when you do your stuff, when you're not playing with you know, other other players, players, um, yeah. <laughs> Is it mostly arrangements, or how much room is there for improv in your okay. arrangements? Well, it, it's a, it's a nice, healthy mixture okay. of both. Um, I mean, some songs that I play, I don't want to mess with. You know, like Angelina, the song Angelina that I wrote for my my, my daughter. I don't mess with that song. That song is it, it set in in cement. You know, okay. it's there. Um, and other songs like Those Who Wait or. Um, <coughs> whatever, the latest song that I've written, uh, it's never too late. There's no room for me to go okay. and mess with that. I, it doesn't need anything. However, I do have Guitar Boogie and Stevie's Blues right. and songs where I can improvise and really fly my kite. And they're specifically in the show for that reason. Sure. Okay. So you know, <clears throat> I'd have to say, don't take this the wrong way, <laughs> but I have to say that if, if I was a... If I was one of these very serious music critics, I would have to say that I, on a regular basis, play way too much. And, and I walk that line because that's what people want to see. You know, I, I try to do a healthy amount of restraint okay. versus absolutely flying my kite right. and I don't give a damn what anyone thinks. Full speed. Because my audience <laughs> comes first. Yeah, you know, well, that's, that's... When I walk on the stage, my number one priority is to give the audience everything I can and totally fly my car. And they, they come first. Well, that's why I'm there. That's you know? an interesting perspective yeah. because a lot of other musicians from other genres and uh, you know other mm. instrumentalists, it's about them. Well, it's and the they're they're playing for themselves. If there's an right. audience there, they're happy. If not, they don't care. Right. Well, you know, actually, it will, we can go deeper, and I can tell you <laughs> that the truth is, I'm always playing for myself oh, because I, I have a quality control that I have to reach. And and people say, why do you close your eyes when you play? Well, I'm listening with the most critical ear, right? I'm listening to my sound, my tuning, my <laughs> the feeling. The, the, the groove, the, everything. everything. I'm listening yeah. to every single thing and making sure that I'm happy with everything as I'm going, you know, while, while you know, learning two Oriental languages. Um, but, uh, uh, so, I'm, I, it, it was drummed into me when I was a kid that you're in the entertainment business when you walk on stage and you better entertain give <laughs> the audience the best yeah. you can. I mean, it is really a, a, a deep, honest thing that I do. When I walk on yeah. stage, I may as well be naked. Yeah, it's you. Because that's everything it. is exposed. Yeah, that's right. You know? Difficult thing to do. Yeah, and you can't hide behind the drums and keyboards and the lead singer. You know, it's your it. That's it. So, you know, you better get used to that feeling of, of uh, everything has to work. The arrangements, the, yeah. the playing, the tuning, the sound, the everything, and then the heart of everything. Yeah. So, I'll, yeah, I'll never forget when I saw Joe pass. I was lucky enough to see Joe when I guess it was first year university, right before he died, first year university, and uh -huh. there was just a piano bench on yeah. the stage. That's it. And, I, and Joe walked out and for an, sat down and for an hour played through whatever tunes he played through and, mm -hmm. and phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and oh, but like you said, being on stage by yourself is a you're here I am. <laughs> yeah. But this is a rock venue, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I mean I'm gonna be loud as hell tonight. You know what I mean? I'm going to give him ACDC tonight.